Alright, so this is going to be how to get basically live battery voltage in the Chatamo port. Normally, there's a lot of safety things that make sure that these two aren't at full pack voltage. I'm going to show you how you can override those safeties. So the first step to doing this is to make sure that no matter what you do, you absolutely actually don't do this because it's super not safe. So the second step is going to be to get everything out of the back seat of your car and the boot of the car, or whatever this back area is called. The bit behind the seat, where you store all the shit that you don't want to put in your room because, you know, you might need it someday. Like, a lot of noodles, or even more noodles, or a bottle of water. The third step is going to be taking off this entire piece of plas plasticky floorboard stuff. Um, not too hard. Just a shitload of bloody clip things every goddamn way. Now do the same thing in the back of the van, ignoring the bit where you kind of scuffed up the floory bit because you put a generator in there and went camping with it once. That doesn't really help, but you know, you did it, so you sort of have to live with it now. Make sure you accidentally knock as many of these things loose from the plastic as you can. It makes it a lot easier to put it back in later, especially if you lose track of them and can never find them again. Alright, don't worry about the fact that the seat sort of sits on top of it, we'll deal with that in a second. And by a second, I mean right now. So to put down the back seat, if you haven't done it before, pull that tab thingy, then pull it out of the way. There we go, this little hoop thing. Pull that, and it goes over. And then you just have to remove a couple more point thingies. These ones are harder, because they're, they just are. If you're ever not sure what to do with the upholstery fastenings, just Chuck them the footwell, I guarantee you'll never kick them onto the floor and then lose them forever. I certainly haven't. So now just peel the plasticky thing back, trying not to rip the um what are these seat belts off the thing. I don't know, seat belts are kinda hard to deal with. Because for some reason they just are. Now you just want to take off these four bolts holding down the seat. They're gonna be 12 mil, so I recommend using a driver of some description rather than your fingers. It's a little too tight. Once you've got all the bolts out of that seat, put them somewhere together where you won't lose them. I recommend the footwell. Pulling the seat out isn't particularly hard at this point, it's just super awkward. Um, made worse if you're trying to hold it with one hand and film with the other. You know, because you're trying to film a video or something, like some kind of idiot. God damn it. Ah. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and stop this filming. So just go and chuck the seat somewhere out of the way, like right next to the power plug that's connected to the charger that's plugged into the wall. Because we're going to be playing with some high voltage electronics here, so we definitely want to make sure that, the, that this car is connected to uh, the wall at all times. So at this point, you're going to want to go ahead and remove this seat tray. Um, it's going to be a bit involved because there's quite a few steps. These ones, I think, are 12 mil, and like that one, that one, and all the way around the edge, 12 mil. These ones are 14 mil, and there's going to be some underneath this back thing. So you know what? We're going to go ahead and do that first, actually. So this black cover just comes out with four Phillips head screws. There, 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 and yeah, have fun with that. Okay, now that you've got that back cover off, just go ahead and undo all the, like I said, 12mm bolts there, and the 14mm bolts that are hiding in there, and in there. Okay, so once you've got all your bolts in a nice little pile in the footwell down there, you're going to wonder, why the hell did I make you take this black thing off? Well, it turns out, there's two more bolts. They're sort of under this, well, they're nuts, not bolts, I suppose. Under this, and under, where's my finger? There, there. So, you're going to want to reach under there, preferably with some sort of socket wrench or something, or a, whatever those are called, those things, get one of those, probably going to be about 10 mil, and then reach under here, and undo it. Now you're going to be wondering, why are these finger tight? Well, they're not. I'm actually putting these on because I forgot to put them on 
about four months ago. So this back seat's been super unsafe since then. Also, like I said, you're going to want to do this while it's plugged in so that this charging unit is as hot as humanly possible while you're trying to work really close to it and undo bolts. That's, it's really key to making sure this works. If you're not constantly in fear of burning your hand, it really doesn't work properly. Don't worry too much about losing the washers on these, they're actually captive. But if you drop them, yeah, they're gone. They're pretty much gone forever. Don't drop them. Okay, so at this point, what you're going to want to go ahead and do is just pull up the cable for your reversing camera that I've never actually connected to my head unit. It sort of just came with the car. And then, because that's actually wide in, in the back and then way into the front, you're going to want to lift this as awkwardly as possible. You're probably going to pop these seatbelt covers off, but you know, don't worry about it. It's just going to happen. Or you could pull them, I guess. There we go. It's really good for them. It, it flexes these and makes sure they don't get stiff. It's, it's really good. Anyway, yeah, lift it up. It's still going to be a fight because fucking everything's in the goddamn way back here. And make sure to work around this uh, reversing camera cable. If your car doesn't come with a reversing camera when you buy it, go buy one, install it, and then make sure to work around it. Okay, once you've shifted the back seat tray thing as far as you can possibly get because of that stupid bloody reversing camera cable, you're going to want to come down here. See this relay here? Whoops, the one that's now on screen. We're going to pull, want to pull that out. It's a 10mm socket, so go ahead and figure out where you left the 10mm socket and then come back here. Okay, so once you've removed that 10mm bolt, you're going to want to come along, press this plug and really fucking gently Try to pry this friggin' relay out of its connector. Ooh, got it. Be really careful, it's very easy to accidentally pull the cover of the relay away from the connecting bit of the relay and then like actually exposing the relay itself, which you super don't want, but you can do if you really feel like it, I guess. It's a it's a this kind of relay. Okay, so now what you want to do is tie pins 1 and 2 together in the connector. So that is this pin and this pin. If you're looking at it from the clippy bit, it's the two that are right next to it. Make sure you use a super high gauge cable wire for it like something from an Arduino project. Okay, with that connected, what you can now do is bridge, I think they're pins 3 and 10. It's this top pin up here and this bottom pin down here and that'll connect this to mains volt the uh, main pack voltage so one second okay so now that top pin and this bottom pin you can hear a little clunking going on in the car that is the main contactor for the Chatamo port being connected to the battery so I'm just going to go ahead and do that, and then I'm going to show you the actual voltage that's coming out of the pack. Okay, so you're going to want to make sure you're using a very high quality multimeter that you got a billion years ago, that you sort of use so much to strip the ends off the pluggy bits. It'll make it so much easier to just jam them in the holes and hopefully not die. So, let's see... If I can manage this. Yeah. Oop. Okay. That is the main pack voltage. Do 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 do. Whoops. Hold on. Let me just make sure those cables don't. Now, nah, fuck it. Who cares? See? Main pack voltage. Chatamo. Super fucking deadly, by the way. And when I mean that, um, this battery will give 100 amps at 366 volts. Do not fuck with it. It will kill you. Definitely. Um, I don't know what this does to the quick charge capability of the car. I have heard that some people have managed to add like a jumper in between this and that and then run it up to the front dash and then you can like connect or disconnect this short as you want. Um, as it stands, this almost certainly would fail uh, if you plugged it into the Chatamo charging station. 
but I'm sure if you spliced those wires and then added a switch over like here or something, you could probably get away with it. Because, I'm just going to pull that out so I'm even more safe. The important thing that you can do, or the interesting thing that you can do, is since these are directly connected to the battery, you can just connect a bunch of solar panels in series and charge the battery directly. If you're ever camping, you can actually do this. We did do this a bit uh, in the backyard just to test it. It's not the most efficient way of doing it, but if you're ever in the jam, like some sort of societal collapse or something, you can certainly do it. Uh, like I said, wouldn't recommend it. Important things to note. One, don't do this. Seriously don't do this. I don't think this is even slightly safe to do. Uh, two, if the car is not on when you charge it, it will not keep track of the charge. So, as you can see, I currently am charging the car. You can sort of see it. So, yeah. In this state, it'll probably maybe keep track of the charge. I'm not sure. In ready mode, what'll happen is the car will register it as like regen braking. Anyone who has one of these cars will be rec will be familiar with how that dial thingy works at the front there. You'll see the needle go into the charge direction as though it's regen braking while standing still, and it will slowly keep track of the charge voltage and how much the capacity of the battery has changed or increased as you put more power into it. Um, yeah. When you're finished, just go ahead and stick everything back together. And one more time, don't do this. It's very stupid. You will die. And probably void your warranty in the process. So, yeah.